am super excited to introduce my guest. He's a talented actor with 132 credits on IMDb. He will next be seen supporting Will Smith in Emancipation, directed by Anton Fuqua. He also has a reoccurring role in a new Natalie Portman show for Apple TV called Lady in the Lake. He's most known for playing the small-time criminal Willie Russell alongside Nicolas Cage in the award-winning film Joe, directed by David Gordon Green. I want to welcome Ronnie Jean Blevins to the podcast. Welcome to the show, brother. Billy, thank you so much, man. It is a true honor to be here. I've, I've watched you a lot through the years, and, and I'm really excited. Cool. So, you know, we, we really don't know each other. I mean, we met once. Uh, you came into the studio. You were uh, w working on a project with uh, our friend Cedric, yeah, great uh, another talented actor. And uh, Cedric and you were working on a scene. I thought it was pretty awesome that you came in here, was working on a scene for his demo reel or something like that. And you came in here to support him and, and work with him on that. And, yeah. you know, I was like, who is this guy, man? This guy's, you know, got some chops on him. But I, I, I did not know your work, right? I, I hadn't seen your work. So I went down the Ronnie Jean Blevins rabbit hole. And I got to tell you, brother, you are a, a hell of an actor, man. I mean, oh, I was I was literally blown away with, you know, some of your performances. And I, you know, I was up late last night kind of just, you know, skimming through. I didn't have time to watch the whole movies, but I, I watched Joe from beginning to end. And, you know, your role in that and your characters in, in some of these films are just freaking awesome, man. I was just like, they're Thanks, so, man. so yummy. So like you, you when you're on screen, man, you, the, the freaking camera loves you, bro. You're uh, like, you're just up there and you're not, you're not doing anything, but you're doing so much, man. It's just you're in your eyes, your look, you know, your behavior. So I got to tell you, I, I love your work. I'm a huge fan. Thank you, my brother. That's that's really nice of you to say, man. It's 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 every every job has been a blessing, and uh, and I, uh, you know, it's it's you only get the the benefit of perspective when you really take time to look back and you're like, damn. Like I'm sure you, there's things on your resume you're like, I don't even remember doing that. <laughs> yeah. I maybe a vague recollection of it. But Joe was was one of my favorites, man. It was it was just such a. a a creatively free environment, man, and I'll, I'll, I'll always cherish that one. That's awesome. So I created the podcast to inspire other artists to follow their dreams, right? Yep. If, if you're, you know, if a kid like me can come out from Brooklyn at 18 years old, not knowing a soul out here with a one-way ticket and just a dream and make it the dream a reality, and I've been blessed as an actor, I, I've, I've had some amazing, you know, I've been in this game for a long time, and I made the dream a reality. So if I can do it, why can't the listener out there, right? right? If a kid like you can have a dream about being in this business and, and be working with, you know, Will Smith and, you know, Antoine Fuqua, <laughs> I can't wait to see the film. I mean, you, like you made the dream a reality. So I like to go back to the beginning, you know, yeah. like, yeah. like, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? Well, I think the seeds were always there, you know, um, I, I might not have explicitly had the thought I want to be an actor. You know, I come from Houston, Texas, right? So, um, so it 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 wasn't necessarily a, a you know an environment of like uh, you know follow your creative passions. But uh, when I look back, I was I was making home movies at, as early as twelve. You know, on one of those big you know Panasonic uh, cameras, <laughs> and um, and I would. I would cast my little brother, who's four years younger than me, Andy, and um, and I just had this obsession with films. You know, um, films. You know, being a child is hard. Growing up is hard. You know, and films just always made everything okay. You know, and um, and I just I would I would love movies. I would love TV. I would live vicariously through what I was saying. You know, and uh, and you know I think what happened was, and then I went to you know, we're, I was told as a, a young kid, just, you know, my, I remember my parents were like, you can do whatever you want. You got to just get a, a degree first, you know, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go get a degree. And, uh, and then I, I just went four years, Texas a and University. And I, I said, okay, I guess the, the whole idea of this life is to get the degree and make money. And then, and uh, I did that. And I went to at 21 after I graduated, I, I worked for a mutual fund company. And then I was there and I realized, oh man, that's it's like that uh, that song, you know, uh, is it, 
is this it? You know, is this, uh, is this, is this what there is to it? This is it. And I, you know, I became fairly depressed. And then I went and traveled Europe because my older brother, you know, uh, said he, 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 he traveled Europe when he graduated college. I, I forwent that opportunity to go to the, go into the workforce. And, um, he said, you should do, you know, what I did, what you, you turned down, which is go, uh, visit Europe for three months. When I was out there, I was in a, a restaurant or a bar and I was having a beer and I just had this whisper. I'm 21, 22, um, moved to Los Angeles and be an actor. I, you know, I, I guess the, the subconscious, um, you know, uh, voice in me, uh, from, from growing up, all those making home movies and watching movies, you know, I, I finally got the whisper, you know, literally really, uh, to move to Los Angeles. So I moved to Los Angeles and I didn't know anyone here. And, you know, I didn't have any money, uh, but it was okay because I think the greatest thing that I, the greatest gift I could have given myself was not having um, any expectation. Not to say I didn't have ambition, you know, but I, I had the good uh, sense to tell myself, just learn, just learn what you're doing, learn the craft, get into a school. And I was 21, you know, and I ended up studying for Jesus, the next seven years at the, uh, got a great, few great teachers at Beverly Hills Playhouse, uh, with, you know, Milton Jones and Milton Katsalas and then Stephanie Fury. And, um, and I just learned and it was the greatest, my twenties were the greatest because I was learning, you know, and I didn't put this unrealistic expectation because, you know, it's, it's great. You don't, we, we don't die in casting. We just get reborn into another, you know? Mm -hmm. So my 20s were all about learning and then I, I really kind of took my time and and uh, I didn't I really didn't get my first real job to closer to 30 so wow okay Nine. so 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 you started studying your craft for seven how many years did you study your craft like seven eight years in total yeah seven eight years are you auditioning at that time like for stuff no no okay. I mean I, when I was I would I would always have sort of a uh I might have an agent, but I'm, if I'm auditioning, it's few and far between, and and I don't feel like I was quite ready. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, so so when I um, uh, so ultimately what happened was because I wasn't getting a lot of um, a lot of the opportunities that I wanted or the agent that I wanted, I um, I ended up writing a, a movie, writing a, my and producing my own movie called American Cowslip. And we went into production with that in 2007. It was uh, a $1 million movie. It was a fantastic script. And we got uh, Val Kilmer played my brother. We had Rip Torn, uh, Peter Falk, his last role, you know, uh, Cloris Leachman, Diane Ladd, just this all-star cast. And um, it's, it's funny, when, when I put my intention into that and, and I started stop, I, I didn't obsess so much about who's gonna give me what and when, I said, okay, I'm going to give this to myself. Literally, when that happened, we we set a production date and we go into production and all of a sudden uh, I get an audition, a guest star. Oh, I booked the guest star, my first guest star. So, you know, and then I had to put, push back production because all of a sudden I'm booking this TV role that I never got out of nine years. So I was like, um, that was like a, a massive lesson for me, you know, that, that the world starts opening up things to you when you start doing for yourself a little bit you know love that love that that's the best advice you know create your own projects yes you know write your own <laughs> stuff yeah but that's, yeah. The, that's what you got to do you can't wait for somebody to you know knock on your door you got to be the one going hey man you want to come audition for me this is my project you got to be the one to raise the flag and go who wants to march with me because i'm, I'm going this way that's you know? it that's and once it. you once you change your your vibration to you know you shift the desk you're not the one going please give me a job please please you're the guy going hey i'm the boss i wrote this and 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 would you like to come on board it, the, you just change the vibration the universe starts going hey yeah this guy give him some more of that yeah it is weird man because it's 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 a hard thing to to quantify or to put into a sentence as to it's just some sort of cosmic like ideal or principle that that it happens you know it's very strange and and I, and and it but it, it if you think about it it is just and it is fair because 
you know, you're, you're working for your own, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I always kind of equated it to like, uh, like the industry being this like beautiful woman, you know, you're trying to, you, you're trying to court and date and she doesn't want to give you the time of day, but when you get busy doing your own stuff, then yeah. <laughs> the industry, yeah, okay, you start dating. You should, yeah. You start dating, looking at another girl, you know, dating yeah. another girl. All of a sudden she's like, well, why isn't he paying attention over yeah. here? <laughs> so, uh, so really the journey is just, just it was such a blessing because it's just I've, I've, I got I received success in such kind of small uh, doses um, and it 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 really it helped me to to manage my expectations over a sustained period of time and made me feel really grateful um, so when I when I did finally start working to a level where I could call myself like a working actor independent of other uh, other means of of, of uh, employment or or finances, then I was like, uh, then I really really appreciate it. I had a deep appreciation for it. You know, you know. I um, love that you listen to that little voice in you going, "You need to go to Hollywood," you know, or "You need to write your own script," or "You need to create your own stuff." You know that that voice, that intuition. You know. I don't want to get a little woo woo, but that's, you know, this talent, I believe this talent was given to you. It's a God given gift. And that's that inner you, that's a God within you going, you can do this, man. You can create whatever the hell you want. As long as you take massive action and you go, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go get that. And you listen to not the monkey brain, the fearful voice is going to tell you bullshit, but you listen to the true self, your intuition telling you, this is what you need to do. Thank you. And yeah, I agree. And, and, in some level, it kind of feels like uh, I would I can only imagine that you 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 understand this. Um, it feels like it wasn't a choice. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's kind of the the good news and the bad news. Like I you know I, I sometimes tell um, like younger actors, listen, if there's something else that you could do and be equally happy, you should go do that. You know, um, be, because it's 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 such a uh, it can be a, a difficult road. But the beautiful thing about what we do, you know, in this acting career is, is what we're doing on film are, uh, you know, the talking, you know, effectively the feeling, the emoting. These are all senses that every single human being in the world has. It's not like we're being called to uh, sit down and play some beautiful, you know, music on a piano or a cello. You know what I mean? Um, you know, my my mother in law was over the, the other day and she was just sitting here and she's drinking coffee and she's like, gosh, I don't I don't quite understand uh, how it is you guys do what you do of being in a scene and and saying these words. I would get so nervous. I was like, mom, if there was a camera on you right now, it'd be a beautiful scene. <laughs> You know, um, so I'm getting a little tangential, but uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like it wasn't a choice, you know, sure. and that's a, that's a, that, so the, the flip side of that is um, that, that feeling that it wasn't a choice for me knew that um, it sustained me, you know, uh, and, and whatever difficult times there were, you know, yeah. Uh, let me ask you, you know, so you, your, your mother-in-law said, uh, do you get, you know, nervous, uh, talked about nerves. Do you get nervous? Of, yeah, I do. I do. But I, I, I try to out prepare the nerves and mm. uh, I, I, I try to reframe it in my brain. So I'm a big repetition guy, you know, um, you know, I do a lot of repetition, repetition with the lines read over and over again, over and over again. And when I get on set, I, I throw it all away and, um, you know, um, and, and just live organically. Um, but, uh, but I, there's also kind of this hubris I think I have internally where I'm on a set with like a, like a Nick Cage or a Will Smith, you know, or, or someone. And I tell myself, you know, kind of this little secret I have, like they better be ready because I guarantee you they're not more prepared than me. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I love so, that. You know, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's my own little thing. You know what I mean? That kind of feeds me like, okay, you know, here I am. Like I'm gonna, I'm I'm here to play. You ready to play? I'm gonna throw some curveballs at your ass. You better be ready to hit them. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is good because uh, it's it's it, it feels good because I, I don't have a, there's not a whole lot of um, lanes in this world that I felt like I could have gone. You know, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not a, a incredible craftsman. I can't build things. You know what I mean? I don't have a. a, a incredible business mind you know so to have this thing um 
that that's my own, which by the way, you know, by all objective observations, I, I, I don't know that it was something that was, uh, was given to me. I studied hard, you know, and I, I can't, uh, I can't emphasize enough the, uh, the need to just study and, and workshop. And, uh, it's, it's just so important, you know? Well, I mean, you said really key things there is, you know, one study your craft and two preparation. I mean, preparation, I tell my actors, if you fail to prepare, you've prepared to fail, right? If you're, you know, that, that feeling, the nervous, you know, I call it excitement. You know, you want that. That's like batteries for an actor. You want to be able to harness that and take that. I mean, you know, people pay a lot of money for that. They, they jump out of frigging planes or climb mountains for that adrenaline rush as actors. We get it right. You know, it's a beautiful thing in, in that moment. And if you can really kind of channel it, it's like you get into the zone man, and magic happens. It's like, it Uh, just, it takes you to the next level. So you you want that, you want to embrace that, you know, that feeling. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it's more, it's, it's more concerning when you don't have it. Right. Um, and I had, I had an acting coach that said this great thing, talent, uh, uh, nerves are just your talent looking to get out, you know, mm. which is a good way to frame it. It's all about like reframing, sure. things, reframing reality. So it works for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's the story you're telling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what do you say? I mean, you can say I'm nervous or you can say I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Exactly. But I, I love that, you know, and, and I and I truly believe that all actors, you know, the good ones, they get that. I mean, I listen, I've worked with Academy Award winning actors and I looked at them straight in the eyeballs and and they dropped their line and they said, I'm nervous. And I went, oh, what? You're nervous? Yes. yes. <laughs> like, yeah, man. that was so freeing. Yeah. I, I, Forrest Whitaker, you know, I'm eyeball to eyeball, you know, he, he had, he's Academy Award winner. And he told me that and it really was a gift for me. Yeah. It just kind of freed me up. I'm like, this guy's got an Oscar and he's nervous and he's <laughs> forgetting the line. Yay. You know, because let's play. Because of the level in which you prepared and because you were unflinching and, and you're uh, during the scene, you were just right there looking at him. Is that, I presume yeah. that was what? Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. I've, I've had a couple of uh, actors that when I show up to the show, you know, I'm guest starring on their show, but when I get eyeball to eyeball with them and I'm locked up, in there and i'm looking right through their soul <laughs> they're like i can see them like sometimes like a, a bit of a deer in the headlights like like they don't know what the hell to do with that <laughs> because i i've come to play you know and and, I, you know, and i'm and i'm you know i mean i played a lot of bad guys like you <laughs> you know um and it's really coming in and just kind of coming to throw, throw those curveballs man throw them off balance yeah you know yeah. shake them up a little bit make them feel something I agree, man. I agree. And I've seen you do that, by the way. And, and, I, and I do love your work, uh, not to make you uncomfortable. But um, yeah, man, you do have that kind of intensity. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I've seen you, the, the work that you did. I saw, what was I watching last night? I watched, uh, oh, what was the, you played Mac. What was that film? Oh, uh, uh, Feral. Oh, Feral State. Yeah, yeah. Feral State. I mean, yeah. what a great friggin' character that guy was. I mean, he was like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. You know, a father of this misfit gang of, you know, oh and, but he was so, I mean, the, what an amazing character. I mean, there was, there was such, um, I mean, I love the scene where you're baptizing the girl in, in the, in the, in the, in the lake. And it's just, you, yeah. I mean, this guy's just like Reverend Jim Johnson, whatever that guy, you know, he's like, he's just yeah. there. It's just scary as hell. You know, I mean, he's yeah. just like he goes from one moment like this loving father to like, I'll kill you, I'll blow your brains out. You know, yeah, um, yeah. Well, you know, as playing villains, it's it's the um, what, what do they say? The 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 villain is just the hero of his own story. You know, exactly. Yeah. And no one is bad. I mean, no people are bad, of course, but very few people think they're bad. They all operate within a certain level of justifications. You know. So I, I think to give these guys texture, you you got to, you know, you, you certainly can't be playing the bad. You got to be playing um, the uh, some sort of righteous justification, you know. Um, so thank you for saying that, man. It's, uh, you know. 
I find it, you know, I find it hard, like in my experience, you know, when I get cast to play the, the villain, the heavy, the bad guy or whatever, and I come in and I go, well, you know, I think, you know, well, I'm going to show the other side of this character, you know, you know, he really, he, he really loves his son. So he's, he's beating him because he wants to make him a man. He wants to, you know, he's protecting him, but you know, the directors are going, no, yep. you're the bad guy. Just be the bad guy. And I'm like, yep. It's yeah. kind of like one note, you know, and yeah. it, it gets frustrating at times. I know it's frustrating for me, like when I'm on set and I want to do, you know, what if I, you know, I have an idea. Well, what if I had these Dodger tickets, you know, I mean, baseball tickets and, and I, I was excited to see him. And, and no, no, we don't want any of that. <laughs> You're no, the bad it's, guy. It's maddening. It's maddening yeah. because we don't control the edit, you know, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, I, I've. I've been, and I've been explicit with directors, you know, that probably, they probably thought, you know, I had no, no business being explicit with them. I said, if you don't give me this moment, you know what I mean? Um, if you don't give me this moment of, of, you know, reverence or of, of, um, of second thought or, you know, or, or something, then it's going to be a one dimension. And, you know, if, if you're interested in what the critics say, they're going to say that you know mm -hmm. so i'll always give it to them um I, I you know i can't uh, i can't help if they don't keep it in you know it's because we're that's their uh, you know the, the the villain that and their story is coming from their perspective you're right and if they just want to see a bad guy then that's what they're going to show you know i think yeah. it's less i think it's less interesting but um i'll always try to uh you know give give it texture you know give the other side i agree you know, I've been asked many times, like, don't, does it bother you getting typecast playing these kind of roles? And I go, I'm, I'm happy. I'm castable. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. Play, yeah. I'll be a bad guy. All you want. You know, I'm a... <laughs> typecast better than no cast. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, 100%. It's a, it's just, it's a, it's a gift to work. And, you know, it's just a gift gift the work and the medium that i grew up dreaming about that fed me so richly you know from from uh, the first time i saw you know et i think it was or you know one of the first movies i really remember just knocked me out man was um watching back to the future you know um mm -hmm. and i must have been gosh i must have been seven or eight or eight you know and i and i just remember whoa and now my son he's six you know and i'm thinking I wonder if, you, if he'd be interested in watching Back to the Future. And I'm thinking, well, there's some sort of some kind of uh, far out con uh, uh, concepts with time. And I'm thinking, well, I, I, it was okay for me. And, you know, I was just a little older than him, you know. But uh, yeah, blessing to work. And uh, I think it's important to really relish the blessings. You know, it's easy to get, uh, it's easy to get kind of, see that I think the nature of ambition can breed discontent right because the ambitious person always wants more like more 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 I think it's a trap to that where you can you know you could literally be on on your own show and and, and think okay what else is coming in what's going to be next i think you got to slow down uh and and enjoy the work whether it be uh whether it be a scene in class or whether it be a a, a show you're on or a movie you're on stop be in the moment and make this moment magic, you know? I really Ooh, think so. Love that. That's, you know, be in the present, you know, and treat it like that, like a present, you know, like a little kid on Christmas, you got a present. You know, it's not about the destination, it's the journey, man. It's yeah. like you said, it's being in class, it's working your craft, it's being around other artists. You know, that's the beautiful journey of being an actor. You yeah. know? Yeah, it's everything. So it's everything. how old is your son? Six six wow so i got a 15 year old wow yeah so i know how hard it is you know for me like like when i went I, I played the bad guy and i had to go off to you know philadelphia for you know a month and you know my son was just born and i had to be over there you know being an abusive alcoholic father and you know kind of in that place and being away from my son, I know how hard it was for me. How hard is it, you know, for you being having to go away? You know, I'm sure working on some of these big pictures, you have to be away from from your son. Yeah, Billy, it's 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 the hardest thing being away from 
you know, my son and, and my wife, you know, because we're, we're a very uh, close knit family and we enjoy each other's time. <laughs> um, and, uh, awesome. you know, when I was, when I was working on emancipation, I was in new Orleans for six months and, uh, you know, so I, I FaceTime helps, you know, yeah. uh, but it's not the real thing. So I, I try to do it. We, we have this arrangement where we can't, uh, we can't be away from each other for any longer than two weeks. So no matter what the circumstance, wherever I am, uh, if two weeks have lapsed, I'm either flying them in, they're either or they're flying out here. It was easier before Leo was in school because they would just come with me, you know. Um, so, and you know, and and I've I've found good fortune with a lot of with with uh, these studios. They they um, you know Apple was great about that, and they they uh, say I have to go go home and see my family, then they would you know send me home to see my family. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, that's nice yeah. when you work on those those you know, big budget projects, <laughs> you know, they fl fly you first class and they put you up in a nice hotel and they take care of you and they give you per diem. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's a different thing from doing that little, you know, independent film with no money. <laughs> no doubt. But the work is the yeah. same. Work and, is the same. Yeah. And also, and also the work you mentioned feral state, sometimes, uh, oftentimes it's like a far greater creative experience to, to be on these independent films, yeah, you know, it's just more freedom you know, it's more of a collaboration. Um, so, you know, uh, there's obvious benefits to both, you know, um, but, and, and money's nice. Um, but, but, you know, uh, being creatively expressive is, is really nice. You know, well, you know, what I notice in, in your films is, is it seems to me like you have the director's ear, a really like really creative license on some of these projects because you know, I, I was at the, I think it was feral state that you're in the bathtub scene and, you know, you got your legs hanging out. I mean, these choices of yours, I feel like this is you going to the director. This is how I see it. And let's do it this way kind of yeah. deal. Well, there's, I think there's a uh, definitely a, a lot of that uh, with any collaboration, John Carlo directed that super cool guy and super smart and, and, uh, and, and definitely had a, you know, beautiful vision, but uh, yeah, I think, I think that that's kind of the best way to operate, you know, and you know, who was a lot like that was David Gordon Green on Joe. Um, he, you know, he, he, ev there was no such thing as a bad idea. There was no pretense. Yeah. You know, if, if the uh, if the crafty guy had a good idea, he'd entertain it. And Love also, it. it's like it would be about okay, let's get it how it's written, and let's just do it. You know, five other different ways. Uh, David would be like, okay, you you and Nick are going into the scene. Try to do the scene without any words. <laughs> you know, love it, love it. You know? Because what I, what it does is it kind of um it it expands the boundaries. So it's like you know, it's almost like you uh you gotta you got to go over the line to know where the line is, you know mm. what I mean? And, True. and so, uh, yeah, I think I, I love that, you know, I love having ideas and, and, you know, them listen to, and, and sometimes you don't always get that, that, um, you know, that opportunity and that's just another way to work and that's just another way to train and, and that, that trains you in another discipline. Um, so it, it all, it all has value, you know, but, I definitely enjoy working with more of a, like a collaboration, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. It's truly a collaboration filmmaking, you know, everybody, every head, every department, you know, brings to it and, and helps you as an actor. I mean, you know, the wardrobe lady gives you that right piece of wardrobe or that, you know, that, I mean, you know what I know, makeup, hair, you know, like you, and another thing I notice about your work is you, get, you have a scar a lot. You know, and in, in almost every film, there's a scar on your face yeah. or some, you know, you're bleeding or, you know, yeah. and I love that. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm a, I'm a character actor. I like to become yeah. someone else. I like to get out of me and kind of step into the shoes of the character and find the accent and the voice and the stuff and the, you know, and I see that with you a lot is like, you have the scar and the teeth, you know, jacked up and, you know, it, having that right makeup because it, it can be done wrong you know <laughs> if you if you know you have that scar and it keeps moving on you you know and it's not you know it doesn't look right but if you have the right team and the right makeup department and the right hair and and the continuity and, and it looks right it works magical because your scars in 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 both of you know uh 
in um, what's that line in, in Joe? You say, uh, I went through a windshield. What's, what's the line? Yeah, I went through a windshield at four, four o'clock and I don't give a damn. Or I don't, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. That was a great line. Uh, man. Yeah, thanks, and, man. Yeah, I think I agree, man. It's 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 everything. Um, I mean, you know, it's funny one on Joe one time, uh, because I had just really gnarly teeth. They tried to give me like a a, a like a teeth like a, a kind of an insert, um, but that that wasn't working. But and I remember, um, I was like, I was so proud of my teeth, my messed up teeth. So in the scenes, I'd be kind of like smiling big and then Gabe was like no nah, man he's like you're not proud of your teeth and I was like that's right that's right so I'd be kind of embarrassed you know of the teeth you know um but I agree man it's it's and and that's why like uh, that's why what, my favorite thing is the fittings you know and, and it's like mm. you, you ah, ah it didn't work it didn't work and then you, I was like oh Tommy this is, this is like one step closer to the guy you yeah. know um and and every step of the way is so um, instrumental and 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 kind of getting you to find the the, the person you know and uh yeah it's the fun man it's the part now you got me all excited man i'll get mm. back to work <laughs> <laughs> you ever get lost in a character one of those characters yeah i think so i think so shooting emancipation was hard because it but that i wasn't really lost i was just more affected um but yeah i get a little lost kind of um you know, I think so. I think it's more of like lost and whoever the like the not necessarily lost in the ideology of the character, but maybe uh, a little lost in the, you know, maybe an apathy of a character, you know, while I'm shooting it, you know. Um, so it, it definitely happens. That's the goal. Right. Well, what about you? Oh, I've had a couple of characters that I like literally like got lost in like you know i like when they said it's a wrap i literally had to go i said are we sure and i had to go shave my face and shave my head because i didn't want to look at this guy in the mirror anymore Oof. because i had become that guy yeah. you know and, and every time i looked in the mirror i saw that guy so i had to get him off of me i had to like get it was like you know it was, yeah. it, was it was heavy or, or there was a time i was i was <laughs> it's a funny story i was producing a movie in new york and uh you know, we had to do some reshoots and, you know, I raised the money on Wall Street and, you know, the, the market crashed and, and there were, I needed like $500,000 to finish the picture. And I was kind of in a holding pattern, you know, and what should have been, you know, a few months became two years. <laughs> and so I found myself in a nightclub with a couple of the extras that were in the film six months ago yep. in my character's wardrobe with his Versace suit and his shoes and his, <laughs> his ring, his pinky ring and the things. And, yeah. and I, my hair was, and I was, I was still, I went to the bathroom and I splashed some water on my face and I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, Oh no. <laughs> oh no i literally had to leave and, and go take off i had his wardrobe on wow man and yeah. i was i was his behavior and i was doing his behavior yeah. still because then i never wrapped the picture yeah, yeah. so i was no, still no, kind of no. lost. i was saying it was in a limbo <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean i mean uh, that's wild and it but it, you know, but it is fun to bring to take your characters out. You know, like I, I, that's a different situation. But like, um, yeah, I mean, it, it it is fun to take your characters out, meet people, and they to a bar. And bars are the fun uh, place to do it. Or you know, um, yeah, that's crazy, man. That's not crazy, but that's that's wild. You know, that's yeah, why well, I, I, you know, one of the most fun they talk about take your character out. I, I played an old lady. You know, I, I like, well, yeah, I played an old, older woman. So. Um, I play a, a New York City police officer who's uh, tracking down a serial killer who kills elderly women. So I'm especially do makeup and disguise and I put myself out, out as bait to catch this serial killer. Wow. So I, I hired a guy, uh, a great makeup guy, prosthetics, you know, a full on old lady, like, you know, I found her clothes, her walk, I spent time in convalescent hospitals, I'd hang out with the old ladies at church, you know, I really found her, you know, her walk, her behavior, all her stuff. So when I had all that stuff, the makeup, and I stepped into her shoes and whatever, I really wanted to take her. So I, I rode the subway with her, you know, and 
and like walked into places and people would hold doors open for me. And, you know, I was just see how if I could wow. really, truly let people believe that I was an elderly woman. And it was so much yeah, fun. That is a trip. Though. That was wow. so much fun. Man. You know, sometimes it's it's more of a, a, a like the character slipping back in. I can see <laughs> Some, you know, I don't fight with my wife often, but sometimes when I do fight, I'll get a little like, I'll, I'll get my slip into a bad guy voice. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell she's looking at me like, you idiot. <laughs> well, you know, I truly believe all of the characters that we play, they become part of you. I mean, I, you yeah. know, that's, the, I think that's truly the fun part about being an actor is, you know, I've played so many different characters and I've lived, you know, when you prepare, you do the research and you become the guy, you know, I mean, I, when I, when I play in uh, LAPD, I did ride alongs with the LAPD and I hung out with LAPD and I ate with LAPD. When I played, uh, you know, a Navy SEAL, I trained with the Navy SEALs. Or when I play a firefighter, I, 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 I train with the fire department or, you know, all of these, all of the research and all of the characters are all, be, they're part of me now. I have their, they they're just part of my life so the beauty is as an actor you get to live so many lives i mean i've lived so many characters yeah. and yeah. it's true like sometimes they'll creep up like you know that that cop yeah. will jump out you know <laughs> like yeah. you know in a moment yeah. i'll see something going down on the street or whatever and my cop character wants to come out and like arrest the guy you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah man you know another another kind of uh a, a strange thing that happens or you know probably something that you might want to avoid that like is um like if you have a good performance that you win with you know what i mean that you're like oh wow and then you know you you've seen it you've seen it and you know that maybe there's a choice that worked you know sometimes i notice that i'll 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 steal my own choices for us. <laughs> Like, oh, that's I'm, good. I'm derivative of myself. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Like what? Do you have a, a something that? You... Yeah, I do a thing. Okay. Well, uh, uh, now I'm solidifying that I can never do it again. But I, I kind of do. Like there, the thing I did, Joe, where I'd be like, I kind of like look at like, I kind of side, <laughs> you know. And I noticed that I've done that a couple times. So it, like I'm kind of evaluating someone. <laughs> so, you know. I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I should probably knock it off since it's been done. Well, well you know, I remember that. Now, <laughs> now that you it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, seriously, uh, you you have some amazing characters, you know. And, and then last night, I, I watched um, the character uh, Death in Texas. Yeah, yeah. There's another one I produced. Yeah, but that's a uh, freaking awesome. I mean, here you are. You're the lead of the film. You know. He's 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 a good guy. He's a bad guy. He's a good. You don't know. He's doing this stuff for his mom because her mom his mom needs a liver transplant. You know, so he's like, you know, he's coming from his heart. From from you know, he loves his mom, yep. but he's still he's got that bad guy. So there was so many. It's so nuanced. There was so much great stuff. You you know, you got to play all of those notes in that character. Thanks, man. Yeah, that that was uh, that was great. That was written by uh, the director Scott Wenhauser, um, and he, he did a great job. He he was actually writing that when we were shooting uh, Joe, and he had the idea of like some sort of southern uh, southern gothic type deal, you know. And uh, that was another one where it's like uh, I kind of 2007. I produced American Cowslip as a a kind of a, it was my answer to just not necessarily getting hired and taking the reins on my own. And then I, Death in Texas, which was, gosh, uh, 12, 13 years later. It's like every time I feel like I want to level up, I'll try to produce something. And I, I it seems like it's kind of worked, you know, because uh, I feel like since Death in Texas, I've kind of leveled up a little bit and had some really good fortune since um, this, that came out, which is right around the time of the pandemic and and uh, get moving out of the pandemic. So, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, Death in Texas was a, was a great experience, and and I'll always cherish that one too. So let's talk about. It. I mean, you you wrote the screenplay for um, American, right? Yeah, American Cowslip. American Cowslip. Okay, so have you written screenplays before, or was this the first time, or had did you had you learn how to write a screenplay? How, how did that come about? Well, one thing I was always kind of trying to do was write. You know, like uh, along the, uh, when I mentioned these twenties of 
of, uh, of, you know, being in class, I'd always write, you know, and I, I had written a short um, and me and the director were friends. And, um, and I was living at the time I was living in Los Feliz with a heroin addict. Like he was a roommate, you know, mm. and uh, he was one of our roommates. And, and I remember he was ob obsessed with the lawn, you know, um, and I remember just being like so intrigued by this, this guy um, who so much internally was falling apart. Right. But he, but he valued this lawn, you know, and I, it was almost like, like if there was his whole life spinning out of control, but if there's one thing he could control, um, then at least that's one thing he could control. You know, so I was like, okay, that's cool. So maybe I could write something like that. It's, um, this guy that's life spinning out of control, can't control his life, but he can control his garden, you know, and it, and, and it would justify, which it, like it did in his case, it, being home all the time, you know, not leaving. And uh, so that's, that was the impetus to write that, you know? Um, and uh, so we, we wrote that, me and the director, a buddy of mine, Mark David, and, and, uh, and and you know, we wrote the script. The script was really was really intriguing, interesting, dark, and funny. Um, you know, the, the the final product wasn't quite what I had wanted, but it's, it, it's okay because it, it it was good enough and it served its purpose. But but so we had this great script, and and it, at that point, it just became about um, like getting the first bit of talent. You know, and the first guy we got attached to that was Rick Torn. You know, and. Um, I find that's a good a good way to go. If you can find a lot of times, you know, God love them and God bless them are are um, are uh, older, more experienced actors and actresses. They aren't, um, you know, I don't think they're valued like they should. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And there's a lot of ageism. Um, um, but on the flip side of that is, um, you know, th there's. There, there's a lot of these these terrific actors that are looking for work legends know? legends <laughs> looking for work. and so in this case we, you know we, we we put rick torn in and then we got diane ladd and then diane ladd was like oh my ex-husband bruce term would be good for this we got bruce and then all of a sudden we got like someone like val val kilmer and he's like by oh, peter falk you know uh rick torn you know, these are guys I always wanted to work with, you know, sure. um, which is kind of the same to me. Like these were my, because of the kind of actor I am, which I feel like um, kind of a seventies throwback anti-hero, you know, my heroes have always been uh, Rip Torn. Listen, my first name on a headshot before I joined SAG was Ron Jean because I wanted to be Rip Torn so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? um, so these were my heroes, the, uh, the, the Rip Torn, the, the Bruce Dern. Um, you know, uh, the Cassavetes era, you know, Peter Fonda, uh, Jack Nicholson being Jack like Nicholson. The, 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 tap, the top of the apex, apex of, of, of my personal heroes. So it was like, so I felt like my heroes were kind of this generation before, you know, and, and a lot of them are, you know, uh, are dying off, you know. But anyway, so we, we got this, it was just kind of getting one cast member at a, at a time. It was a little bit of a different time back then. There People were a little more, um, you could you could get, uh, and maybe you still can, but you could get these attachments and raise money back based on the attachments, you know what I mean? And pre sales and stuff. Yeah, all that stuff, right? And you could, exactly. So, um so it just kind of came together, but I tell you that the at the because I did I certainly didn't have any uh, as the lead of the film I certainly didn't have any uh, credits to uh, entice people, but it was all about the the the, un the unique script I think, and it was just out there as wild. Man, it's a know? great cast. I haven't gotten a chance to see that. I can't wait. Well, it's thank you. It's 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 weird. It's dark, but it, uh, I love it. <laughs> cool. I love weird dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. It's supposed to be like a heightened sense of reality sort of burton-esque you know um and i don't know if people necessarily got the joke <laughs> you know you know creating your own projects producing um what is the biggest lesson you've learned mm, it's a good question the biggest lesson i learned is to value 
your perspective, your own perspective, and not be afraid to insert it. You know, um, on, um, uh, you know, a few of these projects, well, you know, American Council of more, more than uh, the next one, um, there was a, there was this attitude of gratitude, which I think is important to have, but mm. you, know, you, you can have so much of that where you're just kind of sitting in a place of, I'm just happy to be here, you know? Um, and so you might be less inclined to speak up on things where you're like, mm, I don't know if this is going to work or, or what about if we try it like this? Because like, oh my God, this is fantastic. Look, it's my dream materializing. So it's like, uh, you can just kind of be so, so, um, kind of so inspired and so sitting with your gratitude but you still gotta be you know you still gotta have your wits about you and still gotta like stake your claim if something needs to be fought for then you fight fight for it you know and um so that that's that's i think my big my biggest lesson is you know i i got a perspective and and um it's okay if i if i share it you know mm -hmm. um which yeah, which I think is good, you know, to take that ownership as an artist. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of everything, right? True. You know, so. Now, I know yeah. for me, I, for me, when I, you know, when I was producing, uh, I just had total blindness. I was like, like in it and I, I was, I didn't delegate well, you know, I didn't, you know, I wish if, if I could go back now, you know, there was like one producer on the picture. <laughs> it was me. If I wish I, I, if I would have got my ego out of it a little bit and, yeah. and had other producers and been able to delegate and really to enjoy the process. I like, I put so much pressure on myself that it wasn't fun. Like if I go, go back now and really take time and savor the moment and have more fun in it and just realize it's, it's really, it is just the movie. A, a big, a big producer once told me, you know, when I was in New York producing this film, he says, Billy, it's just the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I, could, and I didn't get it, but I, I was like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. And if I could go back and really go, okay, it is just the movie. And yeah, you want to make the greatest film possible, but you need to just take a breath, man. Enjoy the process. I don't know what it is about us people, you know, where we like to choke the moment, you know. But I do think, again, I think it goes back to um, not the danger and ambition, but like the, the trap and ambition. You know, mm -hmm. you're on this film and you have this um, you're, you have this tunnel vision. It has to be this certain way. Um, but maybe. Yeah, maybe you would have let in more like uh, like uh, creativity if you would have just taken a breath, you know sure. what I mean? And in the moment, right? Because a lot of that is just like looking forward, looking forward, looking forward. And I, I catch myself all the time. Like, you know, I'll be exactly where I want to be on a, on, a, on a TV show, making good money, you know, about to go into a scene. And I'm like checking my phone for the camera snatch. Like, what do I, do I got anything coming? Like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's just... Uh, uh, I think it's just a, a constant, constant recalibration of like, Ronnie, slow down. Where are you at right now? Right now I'm sitting with my new friend, Billy, and this is, this is awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. this is uh, right here, you know? Yeah. So this is, you're truly being in the moment. I, you know, if I, I look back, you know, look, I came out to Hollywood you know, it had nothing. And then before you knew it, I had my own TV series and here I am on my TV series. And I'm like, is this it? <laughs> <laughs> no, really? I got my own right. show, you know? I mean, like, literally I, I got, I got cast on a show. They, after 13 episodes, they fired the, the leads on the show and they came to me and said, we want to create your, I was getting bags and bags of fan mail and then the Fox networks is a brand new network. So they were trying to create a new, so they canceled the show and they offered me my own show. Now here I am, it's me and Matthew Perry. I have my own TV series and I'm like, is this it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Wow. Uh, you know, I wish I, I when I go, I wish I could could have like go back and tell the younger Billy, hey, chill out, dude. <laughs> Enjoy yeah. this. Enjoy this a little more. You know, you you made the dream a reality. Take a moment to really enjoy it. You know, if you could go back and talk to the little Ronnie and yeah. give him some life advice, 
career advice, what, what would that be? Same. I think the same, you know, I think the same, just um, like in, enjoy these moments, you know, um, that's, that's, that's always been my battle. It's just kind of enjoying the process, you know, you're, it's gonna, cause you're gonna be fine. You know, we're gonna work and then you're not gonna work and you're gonna have incredible moments and you're not. And that's the nature of every single career. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? Um, there's, it's always, so you might as well enjoy it. And, and I think that I would just say that, you know, or maybe even, you know, you're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, you're going to be fine. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think so. How do you, you know, you said you're going to work. I mean, that's the nature of this, this business is, you know, you, you work on a film, boom, they, they wrap the film and then you're unemployed again. <laughs> you know, you're back on unemployment. You know, yeah. you're waiting for the phone to ring for the next audition. You know, it's uh, it's with the seesaw kids where it's a roller coaster ride. You know, here we're up, we're down, we're you know. Uh, how do you deal with the roller coaster ride? You know, when when there is no work for a while. You know, I mean, sometimes I remember for me, I'd get three auditions in a day, and I'd book all three parts, and I'd have to turn two of them down. And then there was the months where I wouldn't get three auditions in three months. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I would say just constantly recalibrating um, expectation, you know, because expectation is the mother of disappointment, you know, and that's it. I mean, it kind of sort of goes back in with being present and right now is enough. This is enough, you know, um, and because that's no way to live, right? It's no way to live. I don't remember ever getting a job having increased anxiety, you know, or, or like calling my agent twice in a day and say, what, what, what's happening here? This movie's coming out and I haven't worked in two months. Like they've never said we are in luck. One just popped in. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? it, it always happens when it seems that, that emotion, that, that, that feeling, that desperation, that, uh, um, no good comes out of that. It's always when you're like, you 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 go through that, you feel it, it's intense, you feel desperate, you feel like, I'm never going to work again. And then you cycle through that and then you read a book, you know, or, you, or you're like, okay, I'm going to go do this other thing, you know? And then when you do the other thing, the thing comes up, the, you know, the next, the next job or the next audition or the, you know, the next opportunity or whatever it is. So recalibrating expectation and, uh, there's a great quote I, I, I can't remember who to attribute it to but uh, I love it uh, failure I'm paraphrasing but failure is is I'm sorry um, success I might be getting this completely wrong but success is meaning from is success is moving from failure to failure with grace could be wrong do you know this one anyway but uh, there's like just having grace in both the lows and the highs that's it. I mean, that's the, that's kind of the way of the Zen warrior right there. Right. Um, yeah. But really feeling it's a hard thing to fake is the, is the problem, you know, and it goes back to the nature of ambition, you know? So it's, it's, you got to have this, this, this kind of Zen like ambition without all the negative attachments, you know, and the work at the end of the day, there's no substitution for the work. Um, I'm doing a play reading right now, a play. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily know when my next job is going to be right. And I got uh, presented with this, this, to play the lead of this play just for the reading. They've already told me, we don't want you to be the guy. We want to raise money for the play. And I'm like, Oh, wow. Uh, a play with no money. And they don't want me to be the guy. That sounds awesome. You know, <laughs> like, like, one, I don't feel like necessarily doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and two, it sounds challenging. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do, you know? Love so, it. damn it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, you, you know, you got you to gotta find other things to express yourself, you know? Like, not waiting for the phone to ring. Go do something else. Do a play. Be in class. Work on your craft. You know, you got a phone in your pocket. You know, make your own movies. Don't don't wait for somebody else. Write, yeah. paint, yeah. whatever, sculpt, whatever. You know, get your artistic juices flowing in another in another space. Yeah, 
find, I think, yeah, and that's another thing. Hobbies are, are really, uh, really, really important too. Finding something you can hone and love um, just as much as, you know, whatever your discipline is, you know? Uh, so me trying to find other other things that I love and, it, and just as much as, as acting, which, you know, there will never be a, a substitute. For, yeah. you, know? you know, it's funny. I, I was looking at um, your Instagram and uh, I noticed like during COVID you had, uh, you were painting and I was, I did the same thing. Like, oh, I, really? I, yeah. like, you know, my studio, you know, I have this stu beautiful studio here and, you know, during COVID, like it was closed. So I, I literally turned, I threw drop cloths on the ground and I had I was, like drawn paint <laughs> and I was like, it was a way for me to, you know, express myself, you know, it was great. That's one hundred percent, and there, and I bet you there was something magical about that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm, I actually, I haven't been doing it. I have to go back to it because it, it was fun during that time. I mean, my whole family, my wife, my son, we'd sit around and we paint. I have a COVID art wall when you go in my house up the stairs. We painted so many pictures during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, so for such a, uh, for such a bad time, it was so awful, and you know. Um, if there was if there was any light to be gleaned from that it really was the the um the impetus for me and my family to slow down and just yeah. have have each other and know that we had nothing else to get back to immediately yeah. you yeah. know um yeah man so that, that's crucial i think just to have have just create 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 you know um and the uh, it's not always going to be sanctioned by the industry so go create something you know anything go well, there's a lot of monologues out there have you ever tried to read have you ever read some Shakespeare I certainly haven't read a lot of it but maybe sit down for a few hours with some Shakespeare you know yeah, I think it's great uh, yeah I so, try to do that all the time I, I'll pick up I have right here I have Shakespeare's you know it's right here on my desk you know, big ass, the complete works of William Shakespeare. And I'll just try to pull out a piece, a monologue and work on it just to kind of keep my, you know, my yeah. acting chops, you know, working on memorization. How do you, how do you prepare? How do you memorize? How do you learn your roles? Well, I'm, I have a little bit of a, uh, I'm a I'm, I feel like sometimes I'm a little, I have comprehension issues. I know I do. Um, and I don't want to call it dyslexic, dyslexia, but I get a little confused. Um, so I start by, um, like, if I get, a, uh, uh, I'll just write everything out, okay? And um, and then I'll write everything out, and then I get to where I might be able to know it, and then I'll kind of, I will um, read the line before it, you know what I mean? And then Cover. I'll, I'll see if I can write it, uh -huh. you know? And then after I got kind of a working knowledge of, of, okay i i know it in written form you know then i will record the other lines on the voice memo of my phone with a with a space um mm -hmm. for my lines and then i'll just do that all day repetition repetition you know i believe in repetition i believe in doing it until exhaustion and then um I, and then there's something really magical when you kind of push through the exhaustion or because it's going to you're going to do the repetition and it's going to become rope you know and but there's a there's something magical if you push through that you know um so i definitely repetition i have to do the repetition because i have the comprehension issues yeah. you know, voice memo on my phone is my best friend you know it's great i do the same thing i mean i think when you write it you invite it you know, you have to actually carve out, you know, A and C and yeah. you literally, you know, you're the writer now. If yeah. you're just looking at it, you know, somebody else wrote it. But when you write it, you're the writer. Yeah. You yeah. have to spell it out. So, it, you know, I love that. And, and being your own scene partner, yeah. you know, just yeah. playing it over and over and over again. Now, do you work more in terms like uh, like I I work backwards, I think. Well, not backwards, but backwards, like compared to say my wife. Um, who's also a great actor um you know i have to she has to do all the the character work and and almost like she has to earn the right to say the line you know what i mean um so she'll do all the backstory the journaling and all the things and then and then she'll get to the dialogue with me oftentimes i get a very very 
broad knowledge of character. I'll go to the lines, and then after a lot of repetition, then I discover what what it all means, which is mm. kind of you know backwards to a lot of people. Well, yeah. how do you well you know, it's uh, when I read it, I get my first kind of hit. Like, who is yeah. this guy? You know, who is this guy? And you know, I, I follow my intuition that who this guy is you know i'll, I'll follow that i'll i'll, I'll yeah. read it like that all right? right but then i'll i'll start going opposite of whatever i my first instincts of the character i'll i'll, I'll i don't want to get locked into this so i'll, I'll right. go completely the other way i'll try it with an accent i'll try it like i'll try it every which way possible you know like stretch it out like do it like you know if it lines in bold, I'll whisper it, <laughs> you know, I'll, completely yeah. different, you know, and, and I'll, I'll try to find those little golden nuggets by going down that path, you know, that's great. And that's I, great. I, you know, I kind of like that behavior or that, that, that I tried an animal, this guy's a gorilla, you know, and then all of a sudden that. there's a new behavior and maybe there's a, a voice that comes with it. And, you know, once I kind of got to kind of feel like, oh, I kind of know who this guy is, then I like to dig in, like really dig in and do all that work, the backstory, you know, really create the character. Who is he? Where'd he grow up? What's his life story? What, what was his father like? What was his mother like? You know, they, you know, a lot of people go, well, why do you do all that? But, you know, I like, because why? Because I'm out working, out prepping, out choicing, out everything, the other actors, those other actors auditioning, uh, they're just memorizing the words on the page. Yep. You know, I, I know what my character did last night because I did a private moment exercise. I talked to my uh, long lost daddy on my phone. You know, I know shit. I know what my character has in their pockets because I put it there because I know what my character did, you know, you know, so I like to really create the character from the inside out and then say, well, who does this character become because I'm playing this character? You know, where's my shit? Where's my pain? Where's my stuff? You know, and, and then dump all of my, stuff you know substitute personalize i'm loading it up with my truth so yeah. i'm not having to act it's i'm talking to my mother i'm talking about a real thing i'm fighting for a real need you know i'm grounding myself in a real place yeah. and then I, and then i like to like then once i kind of really got then i like to go i don't know yeah. go, go shopping go to goodwill you know find yeah. find his shirt find his yeah. hat yeah. find his boot yeah. step into once you find step into the clothes of the character you know yeah. it's like it takes it to the next level you know I mean, you put on a police officer's uniform you, you walk differently you you know you put on the cowboy boots you walk differently yeah. you know so it's really i like to work from the inside out but then I, once i figure that out i like to find the stuff the that's great know. man that's great wow. and it all counts it yeah, all, every every it's all in the details, man. It's every you know, and then it's the research. You know, it's it's yeah. an actor prepares. It's really figuring out. You know, doing the work. You know, it's the details. You know, I mean, I like I you know I I I did some ride-alongs with uh, you know LAPD uh, New York City Police Department, and, and I've sat with them and I've watched the details. Like, you know, why do they have this little rubber band around their their handcuff key and their car key? Why is that? there why did i see that on a bunch of police officers you know and i and i asked and they said well if you're creeping up on a bad guy in a dark alley you don't want your keys jingling jangling right oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. so you know i get i i i come to set with my rubber band and i got it on my keys so if a police officer watches that they go that's real that's real right. you know i mean I, I worked on a picture one time and and the, the wardrobe lady uh, she I, uh, sewed on my chevron, my sergeant stripes upside down. Oh, now, if I did not do my preparation and my homework and have pictures of everything, right. I would have looked like a fool. I would have put that uniform on, got it to set, yeah. shot the thing, and the, yeah. it would have been a joke. Yeah. So it's yeah. really knowing, it's really doing that work, that much work, that much prep. So you you know, it's you're right, you're legit. It's you yeah. know, it's a, yeah, it's everything real. Yeah. And that's I think it's fun, all in the details, the stuff, you know, that's that is fun. the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's it's, it's, it's all exciting and it all counts and it all matters. And then, and then you get to, um, you get to kind of show up and then trust that you've done that work, put it all aside and just play. play. Yeah. Play, play, yeah. play. 
Yeah. You know, I truly believe that's what it's all about. It's about having fun. It's like, it's like when you're a little kid and you were making little movies and running around, you grab the towel and wrapped it around your neck and you said, Hey, I'm Superman. You know, it's really being in play. You know, I know a lot of actors that they got a shitload of IMDB credits, right? And, you know, they work with some of the greatest directors and, you know, whatever, and they're not working anymore. And I'm like, I know there's ageism and I know there's a lot of stuff, but I, I go, why are they not working anymore? Yeah. And, and I truly found that the, the reason is, is they stop having fun. It became a job. I need yeah. this job to get my insurance. I need this job to pay my mortgage. I need this. So there was a desperation and, and the excitement of, oh shit, I got an audition. Uh, excitement became oh shit i have an audition you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know that's a bad, that's, 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 that's a, a different energy that's a dangerous place to be yeah yeah you know uh yeah man oh god i mean i i i i feel very grateful that like you know i say that there's like uh there's no such thing as a long day on set i'm always excited to be there you know and, and uh, i really try my best not to hang out in the trailer too much i try to be in it you know um yeah man and and i you know I, inevitably 99.9 percent .9 of the stuff that like really worked or that's really memorable and anything that i might do is is something that that was discovered in the moment and not something that i've rehearsed you know you know and i think you carve out moments it's good to carve out moments you, you got to come prepared but like but let's those it's those whisper of impulses that you really got to listen to in the moment you know, because sometimes it's going to feel like you're doing it and you're going to feel like, oh, this isn't working. This isn't working. But you got to go because oftentimes that's exactly what's working. You know, so many times I've, I've done a thing and it's weird, you know, and then I stop myself. And then like the director, I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I mean, that was amazing. And then, like, OK, I'll try to recreate it. And it's not the same because it was born of the spontaneity and, you know, and uh, the freedom of the moment, you know, so. Yeah. You have such a beautiful body of work now. I mean, you have, you know, uh, I'm your demo reel is pretty awesome, you know? So, I mean, I know for me, I would get booked a lot off of my tape, you know? Um, yep. And do you have to audition now or do you get booked off tape? I mean, what's the process for you? Do, do you, you know, things have changed because of the pandemic. There's a lot of self tape auditions. How do you feel about that? Uh, the answer is uh, yes, I still have to audition. And yes, I also just get hired. Um, you know, um, I, I think the offers come more on these, the, you know, the, the, um, the more independent films. Um, and I love the self tapes, you know, to me, it's um, I'm not, I, I historically have not been very good in the room. Um, and that's why I say I, that's part of the reason I think these last couple of years have been really good for me because it's all been about the Celtic because I'll, I will just say, okay, you know, we're working this for hours, you know? Um, and I, I've helped a few, a couple of other, my actor friends and they're like, well, we're just going to do it a couple of times. And then I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> what? like why don't you just keep doing it until you know, you're going to be the best. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I really, uh, I really, I really enjoy the self tapes. So how about you? So first off, I want to ask you. So when you say you're you're bad in the room, what does that mean? You get nervous. I I haven't quite. I I listen. I I still work booking in the room. I just I just if, if first of all you're 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 only going to get it a, two or three times to do it in the room, as opposed if that. to if that no. if that as opposed to as as many times as you want at home um yeah i don't know it just it, yeah the overcome with nerves and 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 not not in a way in which you know i always talk spoke about how nerves can serve you i mm -hmm. uh, just never quite being able to um you know manage the nerves you know that's why i was always just the rep the repetition would kind of um would would sort of outshine the nerves and yeah. and you know, i had moments obviously um but yeah it, it would be the nerves yeah. you know and they still booked from the room but yeah. i just 
if we're talking preferences, I like being able to do it at home and um, or do it, you know, do it on tape. Just it works for yeah. me. Me personally, I think self tapes are awesome, <laughs> you know, because you can give them the performance. And I'm not, I'm listen, I, I'm not a fan of, and I have, I, I have agents come to me. I, my phone rings off the hook with agents like going, oh, I have an actor last minute audition. Can you work with them and put them on tape? Because when I do that, they book the job. They got yeah. a, they got a, you know, I got a pretty good track record that if you work with me and I put you on tape and because I'm bringing, I'm giving the performance, wow. I'm not leaving anything to the imagination, you know? And I think the cool thing with self tapes is I'm not a fan of the purple background thing. You know, I'm, I'm more like, Let's keep it real. Yeah. You know, let's keep it real. Let me let me give him a piece of footage. Like if I'm playing a serial killer, uh, I'm not. I don't want to have a blue background. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, give me a gray wall that looks like a real gray wall that looks like an interrogation room or whatever. And I'm gonna have the wardrobe on, and I'm gonna frame it right, and I'm gonna light it right, and it's gonna look like a piece of footage. I'm gonna do their job for them that they can go. Oh, I could take this footage and put it right there on that TV show. Like yeah. leave zero to the imagination. I agree, yeah. man. I agree. Right. Give them a full on performance. Yeah. We get stuck in these conventions or the way it's done. And uh, I, it, it blows my mind. I mean, I, I also like to move things a little closer, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, um, than most, you know, people like to, uh, you know, do this frame and I'm like, no, no, let's just move it just a little closer. You know what I mean? Um, you know, because the scene is ultimately here, you yeah. know, um, and um, I totally agree, man. We, you know, it, it, yeah, I, I couldn't, I kind of couldn't agree more. And that's what I like to do. You know, sometimes you might turn, turn off the casting director because they're creatures of the convention, you know, but oh, well, you know. Listen, I if I've I've been a rule breaker ever since I got to Hollywood. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell me I can't. You know, I mean, I was a kid that when I go to, you know, the Warner Brothers, the guard gate and the guy standing at the gate said, sorry, kid, you can't come in. I go, oh, OK. And then I walk around the building, climb the fence, jump the lot and I'd be walking on set. And I'd be I spend the whole day there because I'd be walking up to Kevin Bacon shooting a, a movie and he didn't know I just hopped a lot, you know. Yeah, I, I'm an actor from New York and I'm hanging out, you know, all day long making movies, you know. It's like don't tell me I'm not getting in. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. get in, you know, or you know, oh, you can't do that in an audition. Oh yeah, <laughs> watch. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I truly believe that it's all about making those big, bold, strong choices that separates you from everybody else. Else. you know i can i every every freaking movie poster i have in my studio i could tell you what i did in that room which was a big bold choice that got me that part yeah. everyone yeah. i know what i did you know i you know i when i played the the bad guy husband alcoholic father in 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 the scene you know and the scene where i'm blowing up and i'm beating the crap out of my son or whatever and then when I left that audition, I walked out that room and I slammed the door behind me, slam. And the casting director went, <laughs> and the producer said, that's him. Right now, casting, I could have, casting director could have said never again will I bring Billy Gallo in the room again. But I was, I brought the character in the room and I brought the character out of the room. I'm not going to go, hey guys, thanks for seeing me. Have a great day. You know, that's not the character. So I just, yeah showed him the character is it dangerous is it you know yeah sure whatever but you know i feel that's truly how you stand out from everybody else is your choices yeah that's it talent is defined by your choices i completely agree and also like that that's a that's a it's a trap you can fall in right you, is your um you know you're you're sir you're, you're serviceable you know what i mean you want to be a good guy you want to get along with people you know, which, um, so sometimes that kind of, you know, that kind of detracts you from being willing to kind of, uh, be bold, you know, and, uh, you know, that's another, I think another thing that I, I, uh, kind of a trap of mine is like, you know, oh, Ryan's a nice guy, so he's going to be a nice guy, you know, and then, and then I'm, it makes me amenable, uh, which is fine, but never in the work, never amenable in the work. You know, like you, uh, 
You know what I mean? Like uh, it's 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 staying. Well, you got to stay true to the stories, true to the character, and then owning your your ideas. And if it's something that that you know, because it's okay if things are off their axis, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it, it, it's a it, things uh, things work best when they're a little sideways. I think you know, and 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 uh, you know, so that's kind of what what I what. I, but I think my big lesson now is kind of uh, taking more ownership of, of, of the work and, um, and, and be bold in the choices, you know, um, cause you know, I do that, but I, I wish I could be defined by that, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you want to be a nice guy, you know, you want to have a good reputation in this business. Your reputation is everything. You know, you have a shitty reputation in this business. You're not going to work. You know, if you're the guy who's prepared and professional on time, he's made, you know, he's having fun, you know, likable. And, but you, you go to work, man, you show up and ready to go. You know, you directly knows that they can count on you, man. And they, they're going to bring you back next project. You know, it's about relationships. So you want to be that guy that, you know, is a likable guy, but not the guy that's, you know, the kiss ass, <laughs> you know, the, 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 yeah, the, that, that fake, I, I was never, you know, I can never be that person. Like, you know, I've worked with a lot of, you know, I got their phone number, but I'm not the guy going to call them up just, Hey, you know, uh, because I'm, I've never been a schmoozy type of guy in this business, yeah. you know, but it's all about relationships yeah, and, and, it, and it's about reputation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As my dog. Goes. Yeah. On cue. So, last question, okay? So, if you could go, if you could give some advice to somebody with a young actor out there, right, that has yeah. a dream, yeah, what would that be? Um, if I if I could give advice to a young actor, I would say it's all about the work. Cream rises, you know. Uh, get into class, study, 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 always be studying because there's, there's so much, most things in this business are out of our control, you know, but the, the single most thing that's going to level the playing field is, is the work cream rises, you know, be good, be excellent and excellence doesn't always mean you're going to get the part but sometimes there's currency and not getting the part sometimes uh this casting director sees you and they want to give it to you but the producer wants to give it to one of their friends and the casting director's like, damn it billy was so good you know it's like okay we're going to keep calling billy in and it becomes their personal mission because billy is always great you know mm-hmm. so uh if you have a series of 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 You know, a lot of, a lot of, I hear actors complaining about, man, this office has called me in nine times and never hired me. I'm like, that's the catbird seat. Mm Because every time you do excellent work and don't get the part, man, they're like, they're just chomping at the bit to put you in something else. P.S. Why do you think they've called you back, you know, nine times, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So the, the, the work is paramount. Um, and it, it also alleviates a lot of the insanity that's surrounded by all these things that you can't control. Go back to the work. And if you don't have the audition, there's not an audition. There, well, there's nothing to work on. There's always something to work on. There's always something to work on. It always counts. It always matters, you know, and, and, and it matters as it relates to those things that we can objectively, tangibly uh, know, like, uh, like, like craft and honing craft and it also works some sort of cosmic level you know uh be it um karmically or whatever the universe knows that you're 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 doing the work and things will come in um and and it doesn't always happen on some some sort of timeline these timelines man you gotta you gotta get over the timelines man i you know i i've, I've been you know i've been sack for 22 years you know and it it took me a good almost a good decade before i got my first job and probably a good 15 years before it it was you know my sole job you know um so yeah it's all about the work awesome advice thanks man Hey brother, I, I I can't wait to see uh, Emancipation. Uh, I can't wait to see more of your work. I mean, I think you're a truly talented actor. 
You know, I I, I want to work with you. I want to. We got to do something. I want to. Do, we gotta go, I, I think that'll I'll be fun. And I guarantee you, we will, because that's the way things go, right? That's it. You, you, we just spoke it into the universe. So we're gonna be working together. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story. I, I ran into Danny Trejo one time, right? I had a pizzeria, and I, you know, I don't know him. I saw him, and he was at a pizzeria, and he was across from me. So I walked over to him, and I said, you know, I introduced myself, and I said, Danny, I said, you know, I'm an actor too, and you know, um, you know, I'm a fan of your work, and you know, hopefully, you know, we're gonna work together. I, I didn't even say hopefully. I said we're gonna work together one of these days. And he was like, mm, okay, whatever, you know. Um, so I don't know. Six months later, I'm at a table reading. I come into the table reading. I got cast and leading the film. He, I'm playing opposite him. He's on the other side of the table. And I go, you remember me? <laughs> I, I, I said, I saw you six months ago and I told you we're going to work together. And here we are. Wow. Man. Yeah. Well, there you go. And, that, I mean, and that's the last word I said to him because my character hated him on the film. So I, I, I didn't want not want to talk to him. I didn't see. I gave him dirty looks the whole time. <laughs> That's know, everything. But, that's powerful. Yeah, that's I mean, yeah. power of intention right there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, it was like you, you spoke it into existence. Yeah. You knew it was going to happen. There's yeah. a certainty. There's like, it's crazy that certainty. Yeah. You know, I've had that happen where you just, there's certainty. I'm going to work with that. I'm going to work with Eli Roth. I've said these things and then they've happened. You yeah. know, it's weird. It's weird. Well, I look forward to working with you. <laughs> <laughs> you too, man. I can't wait, man. And hey, this has hey. been a total pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy and uh, sharing your wisdom and knowledge on the on the podcast. If, if people want to find you, where do they find you? Uh, Ronnie Gene Blevins on Instagram. I, mean, I think the same on Twitter. So Okay, awesome. All right, brother. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My brother. Be good, man. All right. Take care. Uh -huh.